Yeah, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's now 10 more seconds. Okay, good evening again, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening. good evening. Thank you. We're here tonight to at this wake service for the life of Maud Elizabeth Smith. And even though it's a sad time, we are happy that people have come out to show support to Iceland and the rest of the family. I'm gonna ask Sister Karen to open us with a little word of prayer. You've been sitting for 35 minutes, so you can stand so you get your legs um, a little exercise because you'll be sitting for very long tonight. So let's stand as Sister Karen opens us with a word of prayer, please. Thank you for your cooperation. Shall we bow our heads in prayer? Wonderful, merciful Savior, we come before you this evening as we Put the program in your hands, Father. We come to celebrate the life of Sister Maud Elizabeth Smith. Indeed, Father, you are the one that gives us the healing. You are the one that we adore. You are the one that help us through this time because right now you are our strength. You are our saving grace. Thank you that we have the hope that that is not the end. We have the hope of seeing more in heaven. I pray that you be with the proceedings tonight as we celebrate the life of Sister Maud Smith and be with the family at this time and be with every head bowing in your presence. I pray in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Sister Karen. You may be seated. And we just want to welcome those who are viewing on the live stream on Clean Stream and Guillo. Any family members overseas who are looking, we express our sincere condolences to you on the loss of Maud. Now, Iceland gave me an interesting fact. So, can I remove my mask or there's an issue? Can I remove the mask? Let's vote. Raise your hand if you say yes. Not, that's a minority. Okay, so I'll just keep on the mask. Okay, so I came tonight and Iceland wanted to find out from me if I knew this fact. Who knows? Let me check my notes. I had to take some notes. Who knows what Mars' denomination is? What is she? She's a Seventh-day Adventist. Which pew does she sit in in church? The third pew? That's in... Okay, that's okay. Okay, that's incorrect. She said, and you will pick up. Once I give you the answer, you will know the answer to every other question. She sits in the seventh pew in the church. Okay. Now, what day did she die? What date? Seventh of May. You got a pattern yet? What date is her funeral? 27th. What is her birth date? When was she born? It's not the 7th, so don't say the 7th. She was born the 14th. 14 divided by 2? 14 divided by 2. Yeah, 14 divided by 2 is definitely not 1924. <laughs> right, so she died. She's a seventh day or she was a seventh day Adventist. She sat on the seventh year in church. She died on May 7th. Her funeral will be on June 27th, and her birthday is half of 14, 7. So that's just an interesting fact. So to begin this service, I'll ask Sister Avis to come. She lead us in a couple songs. So while she's coming, these are the rules. If you have a tribute, you indicate. When you get the opportunity, please do not come with a sermon. Everybody would need to speak. So I'm going to play a game with you tonight. Yes, Maud like to be fun, and some people might think a game at a wake service, she's not taking this thing seriously. But you'll get the game. It's just so that people would participate. I was here January 2020 for Davis, and I had to trick Frankie to talk. So I don't plan tricks tonight. So 
I have a game that will get you to talk. So, Avis? Good evening. There's no way I can sing with this mask. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Good evening. And I'm not here to sing special music. I'm going to encourage you to sing with me. If you don't know it, you can clap. If you, don't, if you can't clap, you can tap, all right? And if you can't tap, you can raise your hand, okay? We are here to lift up the name of Jesus. And I mean, it is a, a sad time because that is inevitable. But at the same time, we have to be reminded that we are here to celebrate her life and let everything that have breath, all right? So we are going to start with, hear my cry, O Lord, attend unto my prayer. From the ends of the earth will I draw, cry unto thee. And when I'm still waiting on the musician, and when my heart is overwhelmed, please, Lord, lead me to the rock that is higher than I.
singers. Okay, so I forgot to introduce myself for the one or two people who may not know me. I am Marcia Hodge. I didn't realize I knew Marge so well until I started to prepare for this. So I was at a funeral this afternoon and I went home to get my together and then I came up with the game idea. So these are the rules. First, Maud was a fun and quietly mischievous character. Everybody yes. Yes. So tonight, everything we are doing, even we though we want to celebrate with Aishalin, we still want you to remember Maud and say Maud to them. So I will give you one of Maud's qualities, one that I, that I, I study, and you will volunteer a story or an experience you had with her. And uh, that she displayed when she displayed that quality. So I'm going to give you a quality. You indicate to me if you want to tell me a story. Now the story must be no longer than a minute and a half. So speak quickly. That story would say more this character. And I have to warn you, as any good teacher would, you got to give the instructions well, right? If you do not volunteer. It is highly likely that you will be volunt Correct. So, everybody understands the rules? Do you understand the rules? Okay, like some of you don't understand, so let's do it again. I'm going to give you a quality. Let's say Maud was pretty. And she displayed excitement. Tell me an occasion when you had this, Maud was a beautiful team. That's all it is. There's a mic in the center. So if you don't want to come all the way up, you can speak clearly. So my first one, Maud pointed herself in being punctual. Is that correct? Yes. yes. When I go to the she parked next to her, she would park next to me. If it's five to nine, she's in the car and she's just sitting there like, I'm like, Bomado, what happened? Go inside. But she's waiting for the appropriate time to step in. So one time, everybody knows Iceland, right? Yeah. We know Iceland can't find her clock at all anytime. No, so, <laughs> so, so, so one time, Chris team was supposed to be singing at nine, and you know, like, okay, Iceland, we need, we need Iceland. So I came to church. There's Maud and there are grandchildren. So I said to Maud, where is Iceland? She always late. She get out from you. She's like, not from me. I don't go no place late. Yes. So we, I, we are still we were trying to figure out where Iceland got it from. Mark could not figure it out. So who wants to tell me the experience with Mark being totally punctual? Quick, quick. You have to talk quick. Punctual, always on time. Every activity, every function. Nobody is going. Okay. Let me see. Okay, nobody makes eye contact. Okay, her second quality. I'm not breaking the rules. I just need nobody who will come first. So, Ursul. Ursul is on my list for tribute. So, she's going to come and speak about Maud now. Remember the rules are no more than two minutes. Ursul, Ursul, clap. Come on down to give you a tribute. And we ask you to be respectful when people are speaking so you know so that that person can get their tribute out quickly and to the best of their ability. Good night to everybody. As I stand here. I'm a bit shaky. <laughs> Maud was a good friend of mine. I know her from since I came here and going to Mount Future. go with that. And I surely miss her. I didn't even know she was sick for that. 
That morning, I didn't get up yet. And when my daughter from the stage tell me, Maud dead, I put my hand on my head and I say, who Maud? She said, I should live mother. I said, no, no. And I just took it on. And from that, I keep in touch with Aisling and tell her to be strong because I know what it's like. I had a brother, I had a sister-in-law, I had a nephew, I mean a grandson, and I had a niece. So I know what it's like. So I'm here to sing this song, and I hope it will bring comfort to everybody. I will do my best. <coughs> God gives life, He takes it away. He is the potter, and I am the clay. When I view the last sunset, I've crossed over the sea. I know. Tamarind, tamarind, I got a nice flavor. Them, they were some sour things. Oh, how many of you got mangoes? 
I've gotten mangoes. How many of you got Ponsoret? Yes, I think Ponsoret. Okay. How many of you got Kellips? Yeah. One for four. Oh, everybody up here. How many of you got golden apples? Okay, more people got golden apples. How many of you got shawl biscuits? Yes. Right. She had some. And where you got that? In church. I sit in the seventh pew next to Mark on the other side. During the prayer, you're praying. You know you're bowing next to him. So I think. <laughs> and this is Mark's hand across. And I'm like, what is she passing through the prayer? A napkin. So I grab the thing. <laughs> and she never smiled. She just kept her face straight. And then every now and then you would see Mark down in her bag like a rat. You know, she just digging out something. And then Malia and Maria. You see, she pass over a little snack, and she doesn't want it to walk up and down. So she was generous with that, yeah. and I got my share of short biscuits. Right. Now, sometimes at church, you, you know, you have functions where you ask me to donate a dish. So I was talking to somebody, and they made a comment to me. So I said, I'm going to teach that comment so they don't use it. So someone just say, can you bring um, some rice for the function? Some people will come with rice. And they stay in their house and they look for the smallest bowl they could find to bring this rice in. Not mud, a big pot. Now mud, <laughs> right, I have on my thing, not mud. Mud comes with a bad pan of rice. She share with everybody. Okay, so she was kind in that way. That's right. Now somebody has to come and tell me one of their experiences with mud being kind to them, giving to them. So this is now when you're going to get called. So come quickly. Who's going first? Okay, nobody's coming. Okay, Jerisha. Thank you very Jer much, Jerisha. Jerisha. And if you don't want me to call your name, don't watch me. <laughs> Good night, everyone. I remember when I was young, when Mommy used to go by Maud, and she would probably do chicken and chips. I used to love that because every time Mommy used to bring chicken and chips, so sometimes we bring get chicken and chips through the week, we get it on a weekend, which was good. I remember that part when I was young. <laughs> Thank you, Jerry, sir. Right, so, and then talking to Mara about feeding people, she said to me one day, Marcia, I like to see people eat. I like to see them fat. But when she sees you fat, what does she tell you? You're fat. You know? So she wants to see you fat, but then she tells you you're fat. Now, another part of her generosity, I would say, and this is a praise team story. She was an extension of praise team. Praise team was Mar an extension of praise team? Yes or no? The praise team doesn't know if Mar was an extension of praise team? Paul? Was Mar an extension of praise team? Right, she used to criticize when they don't sing and whatever. But we, we started this thing a couple of years and we said, okay, every member of the praise team, if there's a birthday, we will celebrate this birthday with a Sabbath lunch. Anybody we see in church, if you, have a, if you see a guest, you look for them and you say, come have lunch with us, or somebody who, you know, maybe we never invited before. So the first one, Maud was there, she sat, she ate, and she never says a word. But after we were finished, she said to me, Marcia, do the next lunch by me, man. I said, for real, man? She said, yeah, I come by me, come by my house. I said, my boy, I got to talk to the praise team, we got to talk to Aishalyn. But for her, getting people, she loved to sit down and watch you eat. She wanted to see you eat, so she always wanted to entertain somebody. And I think that was a very good quality that Maud had. Some of us can emulate Maud and, you know, if you see somebody that is in need, you can call them out. My third quality of Maud was she was consistent. Anybody knows her consistent? Raise your hand if you know how to be consistent. Come, Keith. As you raise your hand, come. Quickly, quickly. So while he's coming, she parked in the same place at church. She sat in the same pew. And she attended school functions and church activities regularly just to offer support. So Elder Keith will tell us about Maud and her consistency. Well, all of us, we know... Um Maud, she was very consistent to come to church and every function that 
the church would have mall be a part of it. But I happened to have a very close relationship with Maud. She was like my mother. And we were talking about eating, I eat everything from Maud. It wasn't in no, even though it was a porridge. No, even though it was a porridge, uh, just uh, something to put in my mouth with our hands. That's where me and Maud live. All right, so she was like my mother. Actually knows that. And that's we would always visit her and she would always want me to come by her and we would always talk and we live very close. So my heart is heavy to know that Maud has passed, but it's a part of life. And um, we look forward to that day when Jesus will come and we all will reunite together. All right? So have hope. Don't worry. Better days are coming. Thank you, Keith. Better days are coming by and by. And we just had a song. Another quality she possessed. Maud was a firm person. Anybody? Was she firm? Raise your hand if she was firm. Look. I see people shake their head. They don't want to raise their hand because they don't want me to call them. Okay, Marvo, right here, if you, if you don't want to come up, you can use that mic, or if you want to come forward, you can use that mic to say an instance when you saw Maud being firm. There's a mic right there. Oh, Marvo didn't get the rules. The rules are, you tell me a quality, if you raise your hand, you, you would get voluntold, or you will volunteer, or something of that sort. So Marvo isn't ready to tell me yet. Anybody else? Nobody, boy. Randy, you want to tell me? Okay, you got one and a half minutes to tell me. When was Maud formed? Well, um, Sister Maud was very, she was very formed. And always, she said, always tell me, um, continue remaining in church. Don't give up the church because God wants you to continue serving him. So that's, that was her form in talking to me to continue um, going to church and serve the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm sure she used this finger. She, she had this finger. This was her finger. So I would look at her sometimes if Mariah and Malia are crossing like, Lord, have mercy. what is Mariah going to do to these children? And she would just... And not a word, but Malia and Murray will just know what to do when they get that. Maud was also a thoughtful and loving person. Is that correct? Yes. Right. So I don't need you to volunteer now because I have somebody who's going to tell me about their experience with Maud being thoughtful and loving. So save your volunteer till the next one. I can well remember when Sister Maud became a Seventh-day Adventist Christian in 1986. Right after that time, things were going crazy in my family. I was juggling a teaching job, co-parenting two children, running a home, and dealing with a very sick husband. It was difficult. One Sunday morning, Sister Maud came by and announced, I've come to help you do whatever you have to do. I didn't call her. I did not complain to anyone. Truly, back then, I believed I was superwoman. But she came. And to be honest, I did need the help. Sister Maud started to work, washing, cleaning. I had to slow her down. What is the purpose of that preamble? I am, I am painting for you the picture of who Sister Maud really was. You did not have to ask her for help. She gave it. And if you wanted to see that smile disappear fast, just mention money. Don't tell her anything about what you can give her for services rendered. She freely gave of her time and effort. Some of that rubbed off on her daughter and those little girls, small as they are. With her continued help, my family managed to hold it together. I can never forget her 
kindness and thoughtfulness. During her recent illness, I mentioned those times to her as we talked one day. She said, girl, I don't even remember that. You see, she was a woman who believed in being generous and not letting the left hand know what the right hand was doing. She possessed a beautiful personality. We have been made poorer by her absence. We will miss her terribly, but we have to acknowledge our gratitude to God for loaning her to us here in Anguilla for over 40 years. I offer heartfelt condolences on behalf of my family and on my own behalf. May God comfort us, family and friends, as we celebrate her life and her beautiful legacy. Thank you, Teacher Mario. Okay, for those who are now coming in, if you want to say something you indicate, I have three, four more qualities. So I'm gonna tell you them in advance so you can think on what you would like to say. I have quiet, mischievous, friendly, forward, and I have humble. So those are the ones you have to think about. We're gonna ask Avis to run a couple of songs to give you time to think. And when we come back, quiet, mischievous, friendly, forward, and humble. We know that this wall is not our home and we are preparing for a better place and that is where heaven we shall have a grand time when we get to heaven
You sure she would have been dancing? No. Yes. Yes. She would have been moving her head. She would have been moving her head. Okay. Mud. And she sometimes would just tap on her leg quietly. So our next one is that Maud was a quiet lady. Maud sat in a crowd, and no matter what was going on around her, she remained calm and never needed to be heard. You know, there are some people, they have to jump into it. Not Maud. Maud sits down, and she looks. If, if it bothers her, you will see her eyebrows close in. But she would never say anything. She would make face expressions. Right. Her, ex her facial expressions will give you. You'd be lucky to hear her whisper your name to get your attention. Someone said to me, if you didn't know Maud, you would think she, that she was a withdrawn person. You know, have you ever thought before you got to know her really well that she doesn't talk to people, she's always to herself? Anybody thought that? Be honest. Raise your hand if you thought so when you first met her. I know her too long for that. No, when you first met her, not, not how long you knew her. No. At the beginning, you never thought that Maud no. never spoke to people? No. Because she would still come and speak to you. Yeah. Okay. She said very few words. Okay, so. No, previously. Okay, so once you get to know Maud, you would know that she's just quiet. It's not that she is an antisocial person. Anybody had an experience being somewhere with Maud where it was exciting and Maud was just there? Anybody? Come, Karen. Thank you for volunteering. <laughs> Exciting. Um, well, as most of us who from church may know, um, Maud was in almost every department within the church. She was in women ministry, she was a deaconess, and she was in community service. And she w in, my experience with her is while we were in women ministry, we had women ministry had planned, um, it was a bridal shower, or I think it was just an evening out. And part of it was that we would dress up in lingerie. Most of the women didn't want to do it, and since it was my idea, I had to do it. So the, my only co-pilot was Maud, because again, Maud is a fun, loving person, so, and she liked doing exciting things. So for her, it was fun and it was exciting. And we came out in our lingerie, and Maud have on, what, what do they call them, is boy? What do you call it? I forgot, what's the name of it, is a boy? It's, it's those feathers thing, they have a name for it. She came out in that, and she had, we had fun that night. Let me see the hands of those who were there who remember that night with Maud. Yes, it was, it, I show you were there too, right? It was a really fun night, and Maud took the cake. And Sister Edlin, after seeing all the excitement, ended up leaving the function, going home, and come back in her lingerie, and she ended up being the winner. <laughs> That was my experience with Maud. And another thing of Maud was that, as was mentioned before, she was a very caring person. I remember one time I stopped coming to church, and um, almost, almost every time she see my daughter, she would always tell my daughter, tell Karen I say hello, tell Karen I say I love her and I miss her. And to tell you the truth, that went straight to my heart. So I would say to even me coming back to church was, part of Maud. Maud caring and concerned. Concerned enough that even though she didn't see me, she reached out to my daughter to get to me. Thank you, Karen. Thanks for that lingerie story. I could imagine what Maud would have been thinking if she were here to hear you telling her business. Yes, I could imagine that. Anybody else wants to speak to tell us your experience about Maud if you had not gone already? Okay, nobody's looking, everybody's looking down, so let me see who to call. Okay, Paul, you point at somebody, you come. Come, Pablo. Come and give your experience with Ma. Don't point at somebody else. <laughs> so you get called. Yeah, she, she, she did her tribute already, so she'll come later on. Come quickly, come quickly. Good night, everyone. <laughs> um don't have much to say about um sister Maud. She, I know she was um we were good friends. 
she was caring she was always encouraging she would always give you encouraging words whenever you pass by whenever you get there she must have something to give you always a nice word i don't have any um bad recollections of her but she always had nice and encouraging things to say i would miss her i know you will too may she rest in peace thank you pablo he came and he's so modish like you know come exciting up here we want to be excited tonight okay catherine is coming to give her exciting Re recollection of Mark. <laughs> um, yeah, Mark had a lot of. Uh, Sister Mark had a lot of those, all of those qualities that Sister Marcia spoke about, and yes, of course, I did experience almost all of them. She reminds me so much of Sister Nado. I know most of you know Nadine, right? Who passed. She and Maud was very good friends, and a lot of the qualities that Sister Maud had, so did Sister Nado. But one of the things that stood with me with Sister Maud, she would always tease me, and she would say, What are you doing with that dotted dog, girl? <laughs> but know she was just teasing me and every time I would go by sister Aislinn who never wanted me to leave always got me leaving the house late sister Maud will come out and bring me stuff to eat and always wanting to give me stuff all the time but I really really remember sister Maud always teasing me about my daughter down <laughs> For those of you who really are thinking foolishness, it is a real dog, eh? It's a real dog. It's a dog she carries in her bag. Just in case you were thinking it was a... I didn't say anything else. It's a real dog. The dog's name is Khaleesi. <laughs> Thank you, Catherine. See? That's what we want. We want people to laugh. Even though it's a sad occasion, tomorrow's the funeral. Tonight is about remembering Maud. So now we have Samantha. I don't know what Maud told her, which dirty dog or cat she had, but she'll come and share her experience. Good night, everybody. Uh, my name is Samantha. If ever, whoever don't know me, um, I have a child with Benny, Maud's son, and I met them in 2000 and, um, 2005 when I just came back Angola. I was walking Best Buy, Benny came in the shop harassing me eventually. We started dating, so the first night I went to Island Harbor and Benny came pick me up from work, we went to Island Harbor and when I was leaving he said you want to meet my family? I said sure, why not? And um, Ashleen was in the salon, Maud was in the salon. I think she was doing somebody here, I'm not quite sure. And we went in and um, Benny was like, Mommy, I want you to meet somebody. Um, she was like, who? Who she? <laughs> okay, then, so I was scared. But eventually I, I went and he was like, Mommy, this is Samantha. She was like, who she? I don't want to know she. It's like, Come on, man. I was like, okay, why? Let we go, because your mother don't look like she like nobody. <laughs> so he was like, no, don't worry, but it's just like, the last girlfriend I had, she did me so bad, so mommy's just being protective. I was like, okay, so let's see what happens. And we spent five years together. Maud would go um, St. Kitts, go to Martin, and when she come back, trust me, there got to be something in that bag for you. But she and Aisling, Aisling used to carry a bag. I used to ask her, well, girl, where you going with your house in that bag? Because that bag was so big. Teacher Tasha, you, you know that bag? You never see Aisling with that bag before? Okay then, huge bag. So, 
me being in the family from 2005, even though me and Benny separated, my daughter Dale, Aisling, Ma Davis, everybody knows me. It 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 does like it hurts like crazy, and I'm just here. Thank you, Samantha. Okay, so we have to get Samantha back on track. So I have a story. This is on her characteristic as being mischievous. So yesterday I called someone because many people didn't call to say they wanted to give a tribute. So I called somebody on the phone and I said to them, I saw you as a friend in, Ma, in the booklet. Would you like to do a tribute tomorrow night because there are so many people who want to sing. I will not call the name of the person, but the person is here. So I, the person said, no, and they give me this whole story and then they said, it's not that I'm afraid of the dead. But can you imagine me going right up there that is so small and Ma sitting down behind me? So I said, but you know, but you're just coming to talk. So then the person said, no, you don't know Ma. So, and in my mind, I was envisioning the casket being much closer and the person say, Maud's so wicked, Maud would pinch me on my bottom while I'm there giving this, the, the tribute. So, and I mean, the person understands that Maud is dead, that she cannot do anything, but in their mind, they are remembering Maud, moving innocently along, but just the tired of standing in front of Maud and Maud pinching them on the bottom while they're doing a tribute on her behalf. So I need somebody to give me, okay, somebody just looked away as my eye met there, so I'm gonna call that person, I don't know the person's name. So I'm gonna have to describe you by your hair so that you can come and tell me about Maud and her mischievous ways. Yes, you're looking straight at me, you have locks. It's on the top of your head. I don't know your name. I, you are here at Davis's funeral and you did a tribute, I think. You're sitting next to, across from Karen in the green, three seats across, and yes, you, you just looked away from me in glasses. Yes, that is the person. <laughs> she says she can do it, okay. So let's see. Who should I call? Okay, the leader of the praise team. You spend a lot of time with Maud at praise team lunches. Come and tell us something mischievous from Maud at praise team lunch. Something she might have said next to you. Okay, the praise team leader looking at me like I don't know who Maud is. <laughs> Let's go, Paulona. And while she is coming, because I did tell you to think on what you would say, her next characteristic is that of being friendly. Um, is that Shirley or is that Kathleen? Who's that? Teacher Mary, who's next to you? Oh, that's, um, oh, that is Evadne from Stony Grove. Okay, Evadne, you'll tell me soon. Paulona, let's go. Okay, Prasim doesn't have any, any mischievous remembrance. So, Evadne, we thank you for coming to share um, with Aishlin. So I'm gonna ask you if you would kindly come and give us any experience you had with Maud. We all know more. Don't don't come to listen. Come to share. That's what this thing is about. About sharing your experiences, and don't worry about the time because it ran. We started after seven thirty. They said we will go from eight, seven, whatever, until nine. That's why we are still here. You ready for me, Vadney? Everybody is shy tonight. Wow. Okay. Okay. Can, can, can Cameron, Cameron has something to say? Let's go, Cameron. Who's next? Raise your hand if you're next. Aitasha, you're next. <laughs> good night to all, and good night to those viewing online. Um, I want to share a memory that I believe, um, I think Aishlin is always talking about it, so I don't want to leave tonight and don't share it, so let me share it, so at least it's out there now, so Aishlin cannot hold me for it, right? Okay, so um, I just want to share that um, I didn't really... I was new here and I didn't really know her until I had met Aislinn. So I honestly met her mom through Aislinn. And one of the things I remember about her was, is she always, Aislinn would come by me and tell me that, okay Cameron, as long as, my mother say, as long as he's by your house, you is, 
then you could stay there late wherever because she would come by me and then she would always leave late because she knows that sometimes I'm in studio working so when she comes by uh, she would be like she would tell her mother she's by me and then her mother would be like okay so that's the only place she wouldn't worry that she's out late for <laughs> so I want to say that one of my good memories about her is that she trusted who her that her daughter when her daughter was out somewhere, she trusted whenever her daughter would tell her, Mommy, I'm somewhere. And Aisling was very responsible to tell her where she was. And so one of the things I loved about her a lot was she, she knew people who loved music around her daughter because she knows Aisling loved music. So she always loved that thing where her daughter loved to be around music because that was one of the things that was one of the good things about her that she really loved music. And Aisling used to always talk about her, always talking about enjoying singing and and always enjoying good music so i believe that this contribution to us even tonight as the musicians here it is paying respect to her of how much she cherished and she honored music and i also want to pay homage to her daughter as well because you know we cannot really say anything to her right now but we want to thank her for installing the values of having it's very rare you'll have a child and then to raise them up in the fear and admonition of the lord and them to carry on the mantle of not just to be in in the church but to also carry on doing god's work what they know that their mom love to do they themselves are enjoying it as well so i want to say that it was a very nice time to got get to know her and she was a really lovely person when it came to music that's what i could share she was very friendly and she loved music thank you cameron for your friendly story yes <laughs> <laughs> Marva, you have anything to say? Jane, you have anything to say about Maud? Come, Jane. Thank you very much for agreeing to be voluntold. Well, I can't say much about Maud, but I'm going to sing. Okay, very good. We will take that. <laughs> um, um, the week before Maud passed away, we were at her home. And while we were there, a group of us, while we were there, we asked her if there's a favorite song that she wants us to sing. And uh, she was like, what the name of that song again that you like to sing? I said, the goodness of God. She said, yes, that song. And we sang it for her. And while we were singing the song, her face just lit. And, um, and I feel encouraged by it remembering it that um, we sang it for her while she was alive and um, my encouragement is that what even though what she was going through she acknowledged that God was still good you know and that's the reason why I got the encouragement to sing the song tonight one of her favorite songs. <clears throat>
has changed the mood, it has changed my mental focus because Jane was supposed to sing that song tomorrow, but she couldn't because of work. So I knew if I called her, she might be motivated to sing it. But what she didn't say is that Maud asked her, Anita, if I die, I want you to sing that song. And what she didn't say too is that she and Maud share the same birthday. Okay, so you see? So that, you know, that kind of changed the mood a bit. Um, is there anyone else who would like to say something not on my list? I don't forget. If I left, I didn't say it, I left it out on purpose. Nalda, you raise your hand? When you go to church uh -huh. and you're coughing and mad male coughing, she always opened a flag. I'll get a little mint or something. Okay, what she's saying is that Maud always had a mint if you cough. <laughs> okay, so if you coughed, I don't know if that's before COVID-19, because now if you cough, you better run. <laughs> so... <laughs> I don't think she'll give you a mint now and a cup of water. She would probably tell you put on your mask. Right, so anybody else want to go? Nobody? Okay. So the next quality is forward. She was forward. Very. See somebody say very. Anybody have a very forward story on mod? Who? Nobody? Okay, let me tell you my forward story. On the night that Davis died, we called up the prayer team. Everybody, we go, okay, we're going to buy Maud. Okay, Paul said, yeah, I'm coming. Paul is coming. Everybody's coming up. So we get on to Maud. Vance is there. Itasha is there. Renee is there. We're just sitting at the bar because I don't know what to say and how to start the story. So we are sitting there, people making small talk. And then Maud say, Marcia. Come here. So I'm going to the table now because she's at the table in the back. So she says to come. So I went to her and I leaned down. Maud says, man, I sing some songs now. I sing some songs. I said, okay. So the prayer seems to strike up the thing. Keith was there as well. And then <laughs> we started to sing. And then maybe four to five minutes an hour, you know, you're singing, you're singing. But at some point you have to stop singing. But when we stop singing... Again, we were waiting on Aishalin to arrive. As usual, we, we, we outsung ourselves, and then she came. At one point, we were like, okay, what are we going to sing now? Because Keith called a song. And if you know Keith, it ain't the fastest song in the world. <laughs> so, <laughs> sorry, Keith. So Keith called some hymn. Should have slow. So, so we started to sing because, okay, this is a nice song for somebody who's in mourning. And then Maud said, uh-uh, not that. David's not like that. Get a song with life. And I was like, okay. So we had to cut the song just because Maud said, not that. David's ain't going to like that. Sing a song with life. It, it, yeah. <laughs> but what she said, she wanted to remember him, remember the life that he reminded her of. You know, she wanted life. So that was her, for me, that was a forward moment because here we are coming out to hang out with you, don't know what to say, singing out, and you got her to tell us, uh uh, not that. You know, so I thought that was very forward of her. Auckland, do you have an experience with Maud? That you would like to, not that you would like to share. Do you have an experience with Maud and you can share it? Thank you. There's a mic right in front of you. Thank you, Susan, for doing that so kindly. Thank you, brother. Why didn't he turn that off? Okay, Artlin is going now. Yeah, um, let me see. You spoke a while ago and, you know, you spoke about Maud's generosity. And um, I can attest to that because on several occasions, you know, Maud would just call you up and say, listen, I'm, I'm having lunch by my house. I want yourself and Greta to be there. You know, and we would go up and 
she would have a spread and we would really enjoy ourselves. And uh, sometimes we would just, you know, pass by and hang out and we, we know she wasn't feeling well, etc. But one of the things that I also remember about Maud is that Maud would be in a difficult situation, but she will never complain. And uh, you wouldn't know whether she was in need or she had a whole lot. She was contented with whatever she had, right? And um, that was one of the things, you know, I like about her. You know, she would, you know, you wouldn't, she wouldn't get you involved in, you know, those kind of things. If you approach her and you speak to her, fine. But Maud was not definitely, you know, going to, you know, engage you in a lot of things about what's going on with her. She was very private, and, but she was a loving person, and we will all miss her. And I want to say on behalf of my family, condolences to Aislinn and the rest of the family. Thank you very much, Otlin, for taking a bath. Anybody else? Me. Okay, Susan, go ahead. Um, Mike's out. Speak, speak, just speak low. Um, when I get to Nomad, you know, she take over my whole life. Because I couldn't rest for Maud because that's how if, if Maud come in the valley, she had to come and pick me up. I could rem remember one night after Tori was going for Aishilin. Aishilin used to walk by Bankies. And Maud come and pick me up. And she said, from now on, you know, Every time I'm going to pick, um, pick up Aisling, I will come for you. But Maud was so good to me. And Maud was the best friend I ever had, different than Sister Avis. You know, when I met um, Avis and I started to talk to Avis, Maud said, you know what happened? Avis, take you away from me. <laughs> <laughs> and she said, you know what? I'm jealous. I'm very jealous because Avis, take you away from me. I can't get no part of you again. <laughs> One time after, um, I think it was after the first lockdown, Mad drive across my yard and I hear somebody, poop, 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 poop. And I look out, it was Mad. She said, you know what? I just come to tell you I love you. And you know, when I... When Mad, when I hear Mad die the night, I, I was in chance. It was so sad to me because I miss Mad sitting down behind of me in church every Sabbath. And she will surely miss by me and my family. Thank you, Susan, for volunteering. We have 15 more minutes, 14 and three quarters. Anybody else would like to go? Nobody? Okay, somebody will go next. Okay, my last quality is that of being humble. Anybody believes that Maud was humble? Don't shake your head, you have to speak. Yes or no, was Maud humble? Yes. Well, we, I feel like I'm at a funeral here. <laughs> was Maud humble? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, so I, always, I was always wrong about food, so I can only speak about food. <laughs> So, she would come to functions and she would sit. If you offer her something, she would accept it. But what I liked about Maud, if it was too much, Maud said no. You know, some people you offer and they take, 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 take. Not Maud. She said, no, okay, no, give somebody else. Um, you sure? Give it to somebody. And that was who Maud was. So one night we had a, a games night at church for AY. And March usually hangs around. We had dominoes, all kind of things going along. And Iceland comes along, but Mark comes to bring the grandchildren. So we were selling Johnny cake and cheese and tuna and whatever else. And a lot of cookies. Now the cookies were very sweet. So it's like after midnight now going one. So I said to them, okay, I have to make $300 or we're not going home. So we had 290 something dollars. And I said, I am not giving away anything until I reach 300. And then Catherine called and said, you got no more Johnny Cakes? I want $10 what? I said, okay, shop closed, 300 and one. <laughs> so we're cleaning up now, Aisin is mopping and Maud is saying to her, no, Aisin, look over there. Yeah, um, look, you missed that spot. 
yeah, mom over there, sleep over there. But she's keeping the children in check. So I went to her and I said, Ma, do you want some Johnny Cakes? But I figured she might tell me no. So I said, for the children, man. She said, okay. I wrapped them and I gave them to her. Then I went back in the kitchen, we still had cookies. So I'm like, how am I gonna get Ma to take these things? But I know she has Mariah and Malia, and Jamali I think was there that night. So I said, okay, I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna try my luck. So I gave Mariah some. And then I went back to Ma and I said, Ma, um, take these for Mariah and Malia. She said, okay. And we cleaned it again. I went back to the kitchen and I came back. We had some drinks now. And I had two malts. And I, you know, I said, okay, nobody's getting these malts. I'm gonna give them to Maud, but I can't ask Maud. So I looked at Maud for a while, I observed her. I took out the malts out of the fridge in the kitchen, I came out. And I stood and I observed her until she was distracted. And I went and I stuck them in her bag. Went back to the kitchen cleaning. Then Maud appeared by the door. She say, in her bag, you put these in there? I said, me? You see me put something in your bag? I wasn't even by your bag, so how I put something in your bag? Just take the thing and go home. I thought she was convinced that it wasn't me. Then she looked at me in my eye and then she smiled. And then she said, thank you. <laughs> she said, I know only you would do that. And even though, you know, we went back, I still kept cleaning and we were locking up the doors now. And then she said, I, I said to her, Maud, go ahead. I you didn't see me, stop, stop telling me thanks. But after that, each time she saw me that night, she would just watch me in my eyes and smile because she knew I was guilty. But you know, and every time she looked up, she just, she didn't say anything else. And when she was leaving, now at the last, she said, Marcia, thank you. I said, what are you telling me thanks for? Go home and give it to the children. So that is who Maud was. You had to kind of sneak sometimes to give her too much. And if she had it, she would, she would not want to take it and hoard it. So Kenny, I saw you come. Would you like to give a tribute? Okay, Kenny said yes. Okay, so come Kenny. This is one of Maud's people. He's signing the book, so we'll give him a couple. I don't even know if Kenny's hearing me, actually. Then he's coming. Oh, you hear me? Okay. So I saw him come to the door. And I know I saw him around Maud when she was cooking and selling, so... So we have time for three more, if anybody wants to volunteer. if you want to. Go ahead, it's on. The mic is on. Anyhow, good evening, everybody. Um, good evening. As the sister said, I was one of my friends too, you know, I got to know her through my brother. But I would give the family my condolences from the of myself and my family. And um, we had a good relationship. And that's all I could see for now. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kenny. Anybody else? Do I want? I don't know anybody else's name. You ready to come? You want to come? Come. You can come. Um, um, Susan, give the little girl behind there. The little girl want to say something. Can we um, give the little girl a chance, please? night everyone okay good night is on it now you got it go ahead <laughs> she succumbed <laughs> yeah i just want to say that um mother and i we are family family in terms of her brother is married to my aunt in saint Kitts. and i remember when i was younger i shilling and benny we used to play dolly house together when they come saying is to visit their uncle, because I will be by my aunt. And uh, I'm a little scared. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> okay, and I just want to touch on a little bit about generosity. She was very generous. And uh, sometimes I find, like, when I see her, she would dress really nice, and I would compliment her. And uh, she would say, 
if she has on a nice shirt, I'll say, that's a nice shirt, Maud. She would say, you want it? And I would say, no, but I would really want it, eh? <laughs> No, because this is every time I compliment her, she offers to give me something. And you know, you still don't like you in need of things. <laughs> so you say no. So I just want to just say to Aisha Lynn, if there's anything that look a little me-ish, you can always give it to me, okay? Fam for family's sake. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very, very much. <laughs> okay, last person. Anybody else wants to have the last cake? Nobody wants the last slice? Oh, Sister Naldo, okay, see? It took her a while, but she took the bait. <laughs> Night, everyone. Good night. I'm still a bit shaken. I feel that I'm right up there lying with Maud. I put to Maud in some of 91 when I came here. Um, we were close the first three years. We came it became distant after I was doing two and three jobs. And so we got in contact close again, maybe just on the year when she was going down. And um, I would call her um, every now and again to find out how she's doing. I keep in touch with her and stuff like that. And I saw her, I spoke to her the last time. Um, it was Tuesday, Tuesday. I spoke on Tuesday and um, I didn't like how she looked. But before that Tuesday, when um, we had a shutdown on the 21st of April. April, I sat down with her. She was in her daughter's home and I sat down, spent some time with her, talked with her, and I, I fed her with some soup and I begged her, I said, oh, hold on. And she, she bow her head and positive, you know, you know, Maud, hold on. I said, Maud, I beg, hold on. I kissed her on the forehead and I told her, my, I called my brother in Guyana and he's praying for you, hold on. So when I heard, but when I saw her Tuesday, I was down. And then to hear she died on the Friday, it took a lot out of me. So I want at this time to give my condolences to Aislinn, and the rest of the family. Thank you, Sister Naldo. And thank all of you who took the bait, even if you took it late, for sharing your story about Maud. Uh, tomorrow, the tributes begin at 1. We would like to start on time. There are a lot of tributes. And if we start late, some people might have to get cut because the service has to begin on time. We were late tonight. One o'clock is one o'clock. Please come so that we can begin on time. And the same thing applies if you if you are singing and you're saying something before you sing, do not make it a sermon. You know, say something nice and sing your song. And if you're just speaking, keep it brief as well so that everybody gets a chance to share. So tonight was for those persons who weren't brave enough to come to the front at the church or who just wanted to speak in a smaller setting. So I thank those of you who actually participated. And even if you didn't participate, thank you for your presence. I'm sure Iceland feels well supported. Do I hear an amen? Yes, There's an amen from Iceland. Thank you, everyone. She says thank you, everyone. So tomorrow, the person who is first on the list, I'll tell you when I see you tonight. So that you will be prepared. No, it's, you know, you're prepared mentally that you're going first because nobody wants to go first. Everybody wants to go, to go last. It is impossible. Nobody wants to go in the middle. Everybody wants to be at the end. Not possible. So we're going to have Sister Avis run the last couple of hymns and um, Sister Karen in green. Karen in purple open with prayer. I'm going to ask Karen in green to close in prayer when Sister... Avis is finished, so please come tomorrow. Remember your hats? I wanted to dye my, I wanted to like spray a little something, like a yellow, because she liked yellow. And when I first cut my hair, she said, let Aislinn put a little color. I said, <laughs> I said, man, I can't do that. I don't like people watching me. Next Sabbath, I come again. Put a little color. It looked nice, but it will look better if you put a little color. So 
So I wanted to spray, but I'm, I'm too afraid to, to look foolish. Remember, we're wearing festive colors, if you can. And if you have a hat or one of those pin on things, somebody promised me to lend me one. I think I'm going to look so foolish. But just for more, I'll try it. So come here, Miss, let's go.
In a little while, in a little while. Dear Heavenly Father, you want to thank you for being such a wonderful God to each of us. You give and you take, and just blessed be your name. We do not question what you do, but what we ask, O oh God, is that you would continue to be a comfort to the family, especially Aishlin at this moment, and even Benny. I pray also, Lord, that God would have had an opportunity to make it right with you. When you're coming, she would see you for herself. And for those of us here, I pray likewise that we would meet again as well. Now as we separate, oh God, help us to stay close to you. For we ask these mercies with thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Thank you, Karen. Have a good evening. Drive safely.